Say Jesus. Jesus. I am delivered. I am delivered today. Today. From the spirit of religion. From the spirit of religion. Don't let nobody right. fool you. What you do for the Lord, God looks at your heart. It is your heart intention. Everything you do for the Lord, do it with joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If today we said President Biden was coming to visit us, and we are told that we are going to receive him on Sunday, do you know how people will come dressed? Yeah. <laughs> because President Biden is coming. <laughs> Everybody will be sharp. You have to make sure, oh, your eyebrows, eh? You're sharp, you're clean, you're ready. Because he's the president. How much more Jesus? Amen. How much more the Lord? Come on now. Come on now. Daniel had a purple leaf yeah. and purple cloth, special. He didn't look like third in command. Joseph was second in command in Egypt. Yeah. Nathanael was given a name, Nathanael. Do you know how Egyptians dressed? Egypt is in Africa. Egyptians were very... But how, why did God allow him to be like that? Because God is God. To the Jews, I had to be like a Jew. To the Romans, I had to be like a Roman. So that I reach out to all men. Yes. So Paul said to the Jews, I had to be like what? A Jew. Jew. To the Romans, I had to be like what? Romans. Romans. So to people of Los Angeles, for you to reach them, even the youth, we are losing our youth yeah. today. You have to be prophetic and strategic. Come on now, say it. I don't know if I'm talking to you someone. You are, you are. Because when you try to be different, you're trying to tell them you're better than them. You're condemning them by saying, mm, yeah. me, uh, the way I dress. No, 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 no. No longer will you know a man according to the flesh. But according to what? The spirit. the spirit. So when someone looks at you, you can minister to them by the way you present yourself. Come on now. In fact, when I preach, don't think I'm preaching for those who are just born again. No, my main message is for the lost. Come on now. When I pull out my videos and I put them on YouTube, it's for the lost. Because there's someone right now who's saying, ah, God cannot accept me like this. I have messed up. <laughs> Before I reached out to my brother-in-law, he was already saying, I know I'm going to hell. Because of the way he had, uh, his lifestyle, you know, his hair and everything. He said, I know I'm not going to make heaven. He was ready. He said, let me enjoy myself because I know I'm going to hell. And he met me, he said, what? How? You know, I had my dragon. And I ministered to him, he said, how? I said, what do you mean, how? I said, what has tormented you all this time is the spirit of religion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Jesus came here today, do you think he'll be dressed in, uh, in what you think he'll be dressed in? No. If he came here physically today, you'll see a man with jeans, with a ponytail, just walking in. You won't even know it's Jesus. And he'll sit and he'll do this. He'll be doing this to kids, you know, winking. <laughs> just relax and say, ah. And you will think, ah. That guy, what's wrong with him? You know, why is he so uh, hyper? Yeah. They killed him because they didn't understand him. They questioned his authority. Yeah. He didn't dress like the Sadducees. He didn't dress like the Pharisees. Yet he had an authority to drive out devils. Yeah. In fact, they accused him. And what did they say? He cast out, he casts out demons yeah. with Beelzebub. Yeah. Beelzebub, prince of demons. Say Jesus. 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 Jesus said, I didn't come for those who, I came, I came for what? The lost. He will leave 99 sheep and go for what? One. one. If I have to reach out to one person, that's, right. that's enough. Amen. I don't want to reach to 20 if they're not going to heaven. If they think they're already in heaven, it's okay. But if I reach out to one, it's enough. Amen. One person yeah. could make a big change. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been fighting forces of darkness in this city. Yes. There are forces that be. There are forces that be. Every territory has a principality here in the USA. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Say Jesus. Jesus. My main topic today is I went to heaven. I went to heaven. Thank you. Turn to the book of Corinthians. This is Corinthians 12, 2 to 4. If you can go to Corinthians 12, beautiful. I want to read it. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, 
I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up in the third heaven. And I know such men, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard unexpressible words. Praise God. Which it is not lawful for man to utter. This is Paul caught up into the third heaven. I know a man 14 years ago caught up into the third heaven. When God visited Paul, he took him to heaven. And towards the last, when we read towards the last down there, number four. All right? Verse four. He wasn't permitted to say the things he saw in heaven. But in this generation, the visions that Paul had, what Paul saw is being fulfilled in this generation. God is revealing what was not permissible for us to know. Praise God. Amen. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. You're too good. You're too good. You're amazing. You're amazing. Now, let me share with you something. Open up your heart. When I went to heaven, this is uh, years back, when the Lord took me to heaven, I remember meeting Paul. He wasn't a tall man. He was about like, a, not my height, but a little bit slightly shorter. I saw Jeremiah and Timothy. When they came up to me, they were sad. When they spoke, their lips did not move. I can't explain to you how you're speaking to someone, their lips are not moving. They were just talking. And this is what they said. They said there's a problem with the church. The church is idolizing the Bible. And the church is is idolizing us saints who have gone and are promoted to glory. They preach more about us than what Jesus is doing with them. Mm. Meaning, the church has really failed. So they're like, when you go back, go on the church and tell them that it's their testimony that is a witness that they're walking with Christ Jesus. Amen. Not what they read in the Bible and try to give revelation out of it. No. There is nothing wrong with reading our stories and our testimonies. The problem is idolizing us as saints. So I didn't understand and when I came out from the dream of the revelation I had, God spoke to me He said, son, he said, you see, Paul had 14, 14 letters the epistles of Paul. He wrote to different churches. He wrote to different people. He wrote to the Corinthians. He wrote to the uh, Galatians. He, he, he wrote to, to all the Thessalonica, the church in Thessalonica. These letters were different. This was, was a very different dispensation. You know what the Lord told me? The Lord told me, he said, the reason why there is no power in the church today is because everybody, most people, most people you see who say that, that they're preaching the gospel, who claim to be right and correct in doctrine, they, they use the stories of uh, saints in the Bible like Moses, like uh, Paul, like Timothy, and, 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 and they boast about how much they know Timothy walked with God. Yet in their life, there's no evidence of the power of God. So what they do, they idolize. Someone is idolizing Paul. That's why you, you, you ask yourself, where did all these denominations come from? Do you know every day denominations are being born? Every day. You hear PCA, you hear... Uh, uh, Anglican, you hear SDA, you hear Pentecostal, you hear um, Baptist. There's confusion in the body of Christ. Because it's the spirit of religion, which is very ancient, which is the same spirit that killed Jesus, is at work in our generation. People, listen, you might think the spirit of religion does not know the Bible. You'll be shocked. Spirits of religion are, are spirits that are religious, that, that tormented prophets, apostles, challenging them with the same word they preached. Jesus was tempted by Satan with a scripture. Matthew 4, 
throw yourself, God will use what? Angels to pick you up. Religion is dangerous. You hear someone saying, oh, I know Genesis to Revelation. I know the word of God. There's too much pride. Theology is not power. You can know theology. Who knew theology than uh, their own theology, the Jewish people? Uh, the Torah. Who knew it more than the Pharisees? Mm. The Sadducees. They studied it every time. They put a rock on their head. They went on the Wailey Wall. Ah. Mm. They knew the Torah. They knew the laws. They knew all the Ten Commandments. They even questioned Jesus. What is the greatest commandment? Because they think they know. Right. It is not about what you know with Scripture. Amen. It's about the experience you have with God. Right. Most people are lacking experience. God is not trying to measure your anointing with what you know. Because you see, it is knowledge that is mashing up people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see someone standing up saying, I know. Yeah, I've read the Bible for myself. I have knowledge. Ah, uh -uh. Power has nothing to do with knowledge. It's beyond knowledge. Say Jesus. Jesus. Power is beyond what you know. It's what you've experienced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The question I have for you. Have you experienced Jesus? Come on now. Yeah. Have you experienced Jesus? Yeah. In the Middle East, do you know how people read the Bible? Some parts of Egypt, uh, Syria, they have to cut a scripture, like one page of the Bible. They go in the toilet. They hide. They, they squat. And they start reading their scripture. After they're done, they roll it up. They put it in their pocket. Because if they're caught, they're going to get killed. They don't know. They don't have the lead, but you walking with the Bible. You get caught with the Bible, you're gone. Mm -hmm. But if you see the power happening in the Middle East, which they'll never feel, people resurrect people like Poco in the Middle East. Why? Because they are hungering for Jesus. They see him one on one. So when I saw the saints and they told, told me, go tell pastors, go tell so-called prophets to stop idolizing and using our names and our stories as a cover-up. Because the Bible is very sacred. The Bible is not something you just wake up and you hold it and you just want to preach because you read a couple of scriptures. No. Right. That's true. That Bible can destroy you in one second. Right. Do you know the Bible can mess you up if you don't even know yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. Mm. Today, there mm. are people what we call fanatics. Yeah. There is a difference of being spiritual and being fanatic. If you're fanatic, it's a form of madness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're crazy. It's called being crazy, but religiously. I'm telling you, there is what we call social. People who are social. You see someone who's mad, psychological, not normal, socially. They can't talk, they can't communicate, they can't function. They end up in a mental institution. The same thing also with this same Bible. Demons of religion, what they do, they can misuse the scriptures to mash you up real bad. Every time you're condemning yourself, the Bible says, the Bible says, you don't even have a break. Yeah. They can use the same scriptures. If Satan wanted to use the Bible against Jesus, and Jesus used also the same Bible, mm -hmm. to show you this Bible, if you don't really understand the revelation of encounter, you can be messed up. And that's how you find people who cut off everybody because of being too religious. You know, the Lord said, the Lord said, you can't even have fun anymore. Amen. You can't laugh with someone. You see a brother in the streets, you can't even say, hey, what's up, yo, you're doing good. Uh -uh. Every time say, the Lord is saying, oh, the Lord is saying oh, I'm yes. telling you, yes. sometimes what somebody needs is a hug. Yes. Just go and hug them, ask them, have you eaten? Right. Yes. Have you eaten? Yes. Ah, let's go out and eat some tacos. Yes. You yes. take them out, you eat some tacos, burrito, hey, man, I'm taco was fire. I say, yo, see you tomorrow. Ah. They realize, so what's the secret of this man being nice like this? Because you're not shoving religion on the throat. That's right. The Lord is saying, you know, as you're eating tacos, you, you need to eat something better than tacos. Ooh, you start saying, oh, what I feel is like the Lord is saying you need to change your life. No, 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 no. You can't convince a man. Right. Okay. You cannot convict a man into transformation. Yeah. The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost will come down. Yeah. The convictor. It is the Holy Spirit that changes the person, yes. not you. Amen. Come on now. People are trying to step in the place of the Holy Ghost. They try. Yeah. You see a preacher saying, don't dress like this, don't look like this. Why are you looking like that? Oh, you dress modest. You don't look like a man of God. You don't look like a woman of God. Let me tell you the truth. God is about to raise gangbangers. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what is about to replace? 
What is about to replace what you see on the altar? It, what's coming? <laughs> is not what you, you expect. Because we are so used to... Yeah. Ah, someone looking like the <laughs> ship. Eh? Looking like they're going to heaven. But inside, dirty, wicked, right. hiding yeah. with garment. Mm. So God knows. He says, okay. So I will put people who are ordinary. If John the Baptist walked there right now, we'll think he's a mad person. Everybody will be ready, just in case you get hit in the head. <laughs> yeah, you look out for yourself. Because you're not being hit in the head, you go, eh? It's blackout. How you go? Get surprised in the head and get knocked out, you see what will happen. You see just darkness. We will all be like this. Because you look crazy. You will, will come with a comb of honey. Eh? With a camel skin. Do you know how camel skin smells? I have eaten camel meat. Do you know what camel is? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he come out here. Come on. Everybody's dressing normal. We hear people say, dress modest. No, someone is coming with camel skin. What if today I came with camel skin? Yeah, that's my swag today, camel. The camel pop. Camel skin. Yeah, I come here and I say, hey, with wild honey, I'm holding it like this. I will avoid me. Some of you will say we went in a cult. Ah, it's a cult. Our <laughs> place is a cult. God is not there. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. Or if I just simply came with shorts today and I was preaching with just shorts that are up to here, you'd be like, no, 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 no. What about Isaiah? A man who walks naked and uh, preaching and prophesying for three years. God told him. God can tell me right now, prophet, remove your, your, your shoes. Barefooted. And you see me walking barefooted here and I'm preaching. If you don't have the revelation, you will condemn me. Because yes. you don't know why I don't have shoes. Don't condemn what you don't understand. Ask God. Ask the Holy Spirit, is this you? That's all. Mm. Plead the blood of Jesus. Pray. Because if you see and you judge, you're off. That's not discernment. That's a religious spirit. So, some folks take the Bible... And they say, in the book of Corinthians, in the book of Galatians, why are you telling us about Galatians? Galatians are, they are, they are more than 2,000 years ago. Yeah. They were there. So why are you bringing Galatians in Los Angeles? Yeah. Did Galatians begin in the spirit and end up in the flesh? Mm. He got to a point, Paul asked, who bewitched you? <laughs> Having started in the spirit, and you ended up in the flesh. Do you know a believer can be bewitched? Yep. Religion can bewitch you. Some people are bewitched with religion. A religious spirit does not play. It will quote scriptures the next thing you're confused. God told me. God told me. You, you're mad. Yeah. Now you're isolating yourself because God told you. Yeah, God told me to do this. Yeah, God told me they're going to hell. Yeah, I don't want to go to hell. Now you can't live your life because you're scared to go to hell. <laughs> yeah. Every time you, you are in church because you're like, oh, I don't want to miss heaven. No. You don't want to miss heaven because you're in love with Jesus. Yeah. Not because you feel like if I do something wrong now, oh my God, I'm done, I'm finished. Some of you, what you do is like you repent almost like 50 times, 60 times in a day. I repent, God, I repent. You look at somebody and oh, so Lord Jesus, forgive me. Fear! Say Jesus. Jesus. Religion. Religion is not my portion. It's not my portion. I have love. Love. You want to know perfect and pure religion? Love. love. Go visit someone. Love. Visit your enemy, feed them. Buy them food. Sit with them, say, I love you. Are you okay? Hey, why are you looking grouchy? Take them out to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to know Jesus? Ah, uh, love. Hug the unhuggable. Visit the unvisitable. Go to prison. Make a point and visit a mental institution. They try and see what's the problem. There are folks walking out here. They are just not in a mental institution, but they went crazy a long time ago. Mm. It's just madness. It's bewitchment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. You're just looking at people like this. You want to see what's going on. Why are you looking like that? No, 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 no. The Bible says, come as you are. I went to a house of a guy, and this guy was drinking. He had spirit, wines, and all that. And when I was invited by the mom, the mom is called Miss Zibia. She's in heaven now. She cried, she said, she said, my son, do me a favor, deliver my son, preach to him, shock him with prophecy. Ah, when I arrived there in his room, the guy started cussing me out. 
So you have come to deliver me. I said, no. I said, I've come to chill with you. He had wine, spirits. He said, oh, okay. He put out a cup, started drinking. He said, so is Jesus going to judge me? I said, no, 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 no. In fact, drink more. I took the cup, the bottle of wine. I put more alcohol. I even mixed if you mix it, it does much better. He said, he said, he said what? I said, oh yes. Didn't you know? Mix it. <laughs> he did this. He said, what are you trying to do? I said, what am I trying to do? You, you said I came to, no, 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 no. I, hmm, me, I came to help you to drink. <laughs> so, tell me, heaven, hell. He's playing, playing around. I said, ah, <laughs> you're mocking me. I took more, I said, drink. I said, no, 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 it's enough. I said, no. Now you like to drink, right? Drink. So after he drank, then he was properly knocked out, like he can't even see well. I said, good. All right. So can I talk now? He said, yeah, because he was talking a lot. He got tired now. I said, uh, you know, you're a good man. He said, what do you mean a good man? He started cussing. I said, this is not you. Mm. I hugged him. The spirit of prophecy fell and I started telling him things that were to happen to him and how he almost died. He did what? Who told him? I didn't even tell my, my mom. Oh, you're sobering. So I started speaking to him the love of God. I said, you, ah, you are loved by Jesus. You are a preacher. You are going to deliver a lot. You, you, you. I preached the love of Jesus. Guess what? He stood. He said, me? I said, yes, you. As I'm preaching, preaching, in fact, I took the bottle and said, you want more? He said, mm -hmm. some problem. <laughs> the more I preached, pre man, in the middle of preaching, he puked. Mm. It was a technique, praise God. Bah! Bah! I said, hey, what's happening? He said, oh, I feel funny. I don't know, like, things are moving. I said, oh, he ran out and said, ah! I said, mm -hmm. well, okay. mm -hmm. you want more? I said, mm -hmm. I said ah! <laughs> Demons are coming up. Very and God. the love of Jesus yeah. is being introduced. I say, you, you, you sure you don't want more shots? He said, uh -uh. And I came and I held him. The man passed out. When he woke up, he was crying. He was sober. Amen. He said, I've never felt clear in my mind like this. Then he said, what should I do? I don't want Jesus. He started crying. Why? It is love. That transforms a person. Hallelujah. Not condemnation. Yeah. If someone says they want to sin and it's your relative, don't tell them you are a sinner, you're going to hell. Don't do that. Yeah. The best thing you can do is make a good meal for them. Yeah. Cook for them and say you want to eat. You know what I do? There's a Muslim lady, she came, right? In our house, family member. What did I do? I cooked really nice, right? Very Some good. nice lamb. And I said, you want more? I fed them. And I said, what do you want? I said, no, 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 no. no. I know you. You, you like rice like this. I cooked it exactly the way she likes it. She looks at me, she said, you know what she said at the end? She said, can I come to your church? Muslim. Muslim. Strong Muslim. The father was close to an imam. She said, I have to visit your church. Not because I said, come to church. I didn't say, oh, you know, visit us. No! The love of Jesus convicts a person. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When someone is in love with Jesus, you don't have to tell them. When they feel the love, how they want to come? Say Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. So, some folks use the Bible out of context. Don't think learning the Bible and approving yourself as a good teacher it's not supposed to be twisted. I, right now, I sense the spirit of prophecy. Amen. They accuse Jesus of being a friend of what? Sinners. Yes. If I tell you, you look at me as a preacher, if I tell you the people have been around, my wife knows. <laughs> dangerous people. I'm talking about dangerous people. Dangerous. When I say dangerous, some things I can't say on camera. Or I can't tell you. Someone you play a little bit, they make sure you, you when you look at them, don't turn your eyes. Because if you turn your eyes, they think you have to something. They'll take you out. How many times have I had a gun pointed on my head? 
just because of being around the wrong place. And whoever is pointing the gun, put it down. I went to Vegas one time. I'm evangelizing to a girl who was uh, yeah, like a stripper. And also she was like uh, prostituting herself. While I'm evangelizing, the pimp had a black leather jacket. He came with a gun. Remember? I pulled it out of Facebook because I, it was live. It would have been a problem. I didn't want the man to be, my video to be flagged and the man to be, you know, for them to look for him. The man came with a gun and pointed it on my face like this. He said, what you gonna do? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Going crazy with glasses. Ah, me, I knew I'm going home. I said, oh, the devil got me today. So as he pointed the gun, he's doing this, what you saying, mental guy? I said, uh, I said, sir, listen, give me an opportunity to explain myself. So, you better say what you, he's going like this. This guy's like, doing this. I said, you just lost your studio. Your mother just died. You lost your studio because your friend stole it from you. He removed his glasses and put it behind. And he looked at me and one tear came down. He said, what the F is this you're telling me? How you know that? You know? And then he got so angry, he put down the gun. And he did this to me. And he walked away. Why did he have a tear? That soul right now, whatever it is, that tear was not a tear. That was an encounter there. That soul will be born again. I was supposed to be shot. Yeah. <laughs> Man, a gun. God knows. Listen. Say Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. I need you. I need you. Help me. Help me. Not be religious. Not be religious. Help me love. Help me love. Today. Today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.